Reno, why are you still using Elementor? Reno, you must switch to Bricks. Why haven't you switched to Webflow? I get these kind of questions so much that I just wanted to tackle them once and for good, at least for 2024. Because as you can see by the title, I'm sticking to Elementor for this year. Disclaimer, these are my personal reasons. It's not that this video is all about why Elementor is the best page builder in every aspect, because I'm very aware that it's not the best in every area. At the end of the video, I do have some arguments against the other page builders, which you might find interesting. But for now, I want to explain my perspective using an analogy. So let's get started. Imagine you are living on a cruise ship and it's nice on the ship. You are paying some money to stay on the ship, but you're also making a lot of money on the ship because you make marketing videos for that ship. So you keep lots of profit in your pocket each month. So life is pretty good. You have the freedom to move around on the ship. You know everyone on the ship. And if you have a problem, you can almost always get some help because there's always someone who knows something. There are some things on the ship that you would like to see improved, but you understand that change isn't easy on a big ship like this, and in general you are happy with what you can do on the ship. And then one day you are standing on the deck of the ship and then on the horizon there comes a new smaller ship, which looks a lot nicer from the outside and it's cheaper to live in. People start talking about that new ship and some adventurers are jumping out of the ship and start to swim towards the new smaller ship. After a few days, the people on that new ship have spent some time there and they're calling you that it's amazing there and that you should be making videos about that ship because more people should discover how amazing it is. The food is nicer, the rooms are better and it's cheaper. But are you also gonna jump and swim to the new ship or do you stay in comfort on the big cruise? Because why would you take the risk of leaving the big ship if life is already pretty good? And of course in this analogy the big ship is Elementor. The first reason is that you simply don't know the new ship. It has all kinds of new systems and you don't know how everything is called. So it will take some time for you to learn about all of that before you can start making the same amount of money as you used to make on the big ship. Changing your whole page builder and therefore workflow requires you to spend weeks and maybe even months figuring out how everything works. Most people simply don't have time for this because they're so busy inside of projects, but it's also a mental effort because after all these years, you finally understand everything about this tool. You have the famous saying, if it works, don't touch it. And I think this applies here. If something works for your business, then why would you change it? Elementor is simply good enough to make a lot of money. I have done that multiple times, but there are people who have made even more, like millions, like these guys on Facebook, which I saw. And of course, you could also try to live on different ships at the same time. So using different page builders at the same time. But that for me is a little bit of a hassle. I think that's not really efficient because then you have to keep yourself updated about two tools or maybe even three if you choose to. And yes, some things on the new ship may be nicer, but what if you run into a problem? On the big ship, there's always someone who can help you. With Elementor, you have many different Facebook groups. You have ton and ton of YouTube videos over the years from cool YouTubers <laughs> like me, or for example, Jeffrey from Lightbox, or Imran, or Ferdi, or Daryl, or Paul, or even Elementor themselves. And you even have multiple Elementor courses these days from creators <laughs> like me. I'm not the only one anymore, but those are great packages where you can get a lot of information at once. And probably in your real life, you also know a few people who use Elementor, so you can also talk to them and ask questions. The new small ships or page builders don't have that community yet. So when you run into a problem, you're more on your own. And that pain is something that most people would like to avoid. And that new ship has many nice things, don't get me wrong, but it's not so big and therefore not so stable. So when a big wave comes, maybe the ship can like tilt and you will drown. <laughs> a similar situation happened with oxygen. This was a builder that was becoming more and more popular with each month, but it was a small team. I don't know how many developers they had, but the founder just decided that this product was not really worth it anymore to invest all of their time in. So then they made a new product, a completely new page builder called Breakdance. And now many people think that this is really cool. 
But when that happened, many people were mad because they're like, wait, I invested all of my time and money into this and now you're changing your whole strategy and focusing on another builder. Like what's going on? And this can happen with smaller companies because the founder can just decide to change everything or just cancel the whole project. With a big company like Elementor, that doesn't happen that easily because they have hundreds of employees, uh, developers, marketing, content creators, but also investors who will not let that happen. It's not that the founder can just decide and then everything changes. So the ship is big and therefore a lot more stable. And a bigger ship cannot improve so easily as a smaller ship. If you want to make big changes on a big ship, it's just simply a lot harder because there are so many systems that work together. On a smaller ship and in smaller companies, you can move quicker. But that's the thing. When these new tools, for example, Bricks or Breakdance or whatever builder you prefer, becomes bigger and they also get hundreds of employees, then they will also become slower in the speed that they can move. But it does become more stable. So I think you're starting to get the point. I am simply not an early adapter. Maybe you've seen this graph before. I think I am in the blue area because I don't like to take a lot of risk, but I also don't want to be late. So I am somewhere around here. And many people that are now jumping to the new builders are more like here. They're leaving the big ship in the hope for something better. Another benefit of staying on a bigger ship is that you can freely move around. Within the big ship, you can go to any room, any restaurant, any shop, whatever you want. And I make that comparison to WordPress. Elementor gives you a lot of freedom. You can choose your own hosting. You can even choose your own theme. Not that I personally do that because I always work with Hello Elementor. Therefore, uh, builders like Bricks and DV, which provide a theme, are actually pretty good. But this point is more about hosting because I do also get a lot of questions about Webflow. Why I haven't switched to Webflow? And for me, one of the reasons is because it's a closed off system. You have to buy their hosting. And if you want to get the same functionality as you get on the WordPress, you're already on the business plan, which is not cheap at all. But apart from the price, you are locked into their hosting. And yes, of course, you can export your whole website to HTML and then upload it into another hosting. But the benefit of WordPress is that you can choose and you can change. Okay, I think I've made my point, but these points are not really about Elementor itself. It's more about the mindset and how I do my business. Then let's talk about Bricks, what I don't like about Bricks so far. First of all, I want to say I am interested in Bricks. I have already tested some things in Bricks. I don't feel competent yet to make websites with it or even make videos about it. I'm just still testing with it. And the main reason for this is that it's not as intuitive as Elementor. It is pretty similar because they also work with things like containers. But for example, they have four starter blocks. With Elementor, you just have one container. And here, that's a little bit different. So you have to learn when you're going to use what kind of block. But that's the thing with Bricks. It requires you to understand quite a bit about the web. The same is true for uh, Webflow. It's very similar in terms of how it works. It is built from a coding mindset, but then a visual builder. Elementor is more like the other way around. It's They started with uh, designers or people who don't know code, and, and then they try to make it as easy as possible. So Webflow, in my eyes, is very similar to Bricks in terms of workflow. What I like about Webflow is that their animations and transitions are just a lot better. You have so many more options to make your website look so cool. But again, it does require you some knowledge about these kinds of things. Breakdance. I'm also interested in breakdance, to be honest, to figure it out. But I do not like the thing that the founder did by just changing the whole plan and then losing trust with their audience. I just really dislike that. Also that they use uh, fake photos on their homepage. Everybody knows that these photos are from Unsplash. I mean, come on, breakdance. <laughs> That's not good. Oxygen is like Adobe XD for me now. Uh, they're probably not gonna develop that much in it anymore. So that's why I would just focus on breakdance. Framer, also very interesting. I haven't talked about this on my channel yet, but I've heard many good things about it. 
it's almost like a Figma experience, but then in development. I think this one is really interesting. They do also offer an option to use your own hosting, which I like uh, compared to Webflow, where it's more like a closed system. But I'm not really sure. I need to figure this out. But I really love some of the features that they have. And it just looks so unbelievably slick. So I want to test this out in the future as well. But then I have to sacrifice WordPress, which I'm not sure if I want. Because on WordPress, anything is possible. Which is a blessing and a curse, of course. But still, it's important. The freedom. Gutenberg. Yeah, why am I not yet on the Gutenberg train? Well, simply because I think it's uh, not developed enough. It's too simple in terms of design. Many people say it's the future of WordPress, maybe. But for me, they simply don't have the options right now that I'm looking for. I know there are block builder plugins that give you more options, but I haven't had the time to figure that out. And I also know that Gutenberg is not so popular. Many people disable Gutenberg. Uh, actually, millions of people disable Gutenberg. Uh, you can see that in the plugin directory in WordPress. And uh, Daryl Wilson made an excellent analysis on why he thinks Gutenberg is not so popular as it may seem. Uh, that's an interesting video. You can watch that. I will put a link down below. So I think with Gutenberg, it's a little bit of the same with the new builders. I think people talk about that. It's going to take over the, the, the page builder market, but it's probably not the case, at least for the upcoming year. I'm not worried about that. I'm missing out something in Gutenberg. I also want to tackle a point about page speed, because we all know that many people complain about the speed of Elementor websites. And the thing is that if you don't really build in an efficient way, then your website can become slow really easily because Elementor is not the most efficient in terms of code compared to other builders. But if you know how to build an Elementor, then you can still get 90 plus page speed scores quite easily as I've done multiple times. Is it perfect? No. I do need to improve my mobile speed, as you can see, but also this website is not perfect yet. There are way too many plugins. The site settings uh, are not optimized yet. I can improve the images a little bit more. So the fact that this is not even optimized, but I still get really good scores, that proves that it is possible to get good scores. And this is not a small website, uh, guys. This is my main website for Elementor, but it's just so quick and smooth. Everything you try to load in, is just within one second animations are smooth of course i also have a nice macbook and i do have good internet here so that helps but i just want to say that the speed of elemental websites can be good if you know how to build so if you want to learn how to build in a proper way so that you can get those great speeds then you can check out my course because that's where i explain that how to build in the most efficient way for yourself but also in a way that it keeps your website fast so the websites that I build with Elementor and that run on decent hosting, they all load within or around one second, which is more than enough. And if my clients even want more of that, let's say they want half a second loading time, sure, then go to another agency and pay 20 grand for the website. <laughs> with me, you get a great deal and you get a pretty decent fast website and that should be good enough for the money that people pay me. I'm not a premium agency where they can expect the best of the best so i think in generally people are way too hard for themselves when it comes to page speed and they should just be happy with websites that load within one second i mean you're not a developer where you're a no-code developer and a designer it's fine okay you can always upgrade your hosting but definitely learn how to build websites so am i defending elementor on all different fronts well, absolutely not. I have been very critical over the years. I've made many videos where I criticize them. Sometimes that even leads to changes. So that's also a good thing. They're not too stubborn and they want to improve. I know there are people, I've met like 20 people from Elementor in real life. They're really cool people. They want to build something great, but that does not mean that everything is always possible. But that also doesn't mean that we should just jump from opportunity to opportunity all the time when there's a new page builder, because that will actually be very inefficient for your business. And I think many people can just benefit from just focusing on making money with one builder instead of trying to constantly look for other ships and swimming in the water and losing time by learning all of it instead of just choosing one and trying to make it work. It's like marriage. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good comparison, but I think I made my point. So if I have the time later this year, I would love to spend some time learning the new tools 
Uh, but for now, I'm just going to stick to Elementor because this works for me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you disagree with some things? Let's have an interesting discussion in the comments. And then hopefully I will see you in the next video.